Hello, welcome to Carrot and Blue. My name's Dan Rowlands. I'm joined here by John Townley at Hockey Social Club. John, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. <laughs> good night to me. <laughs> yeah, how are you, Dan? I'm good. I've pulled out the shorts today and I'm, I'm a little bit self-conscious yeah, that they're going to be seen on camera, my, my pale legs, but it's a shorts day today, I think. Yeah, you're all summery and I'm there in my black jumper and my black trousers. <laughs> Two vibes. Yeah, I was in the office, so that's my excuse. Okay, fair enough. I've been doing nothing at home. We're here today to talk about how good Unai Emery is for the, the millionth time on the show and how he can kind of build a legacy at Aston Villa, I think is, will be the title of this video or kind of words to that effect. To me, and we've we've had these conversations as fans over the last three or four months that it feels kind of similar to how when Wenger came to Arsenal and it was a kind of like a big revolutionary change that I'm not saying Emery's going to come in and change training methods across the whole of English football because obviously the changes that Wenger made at Arsenal made big kind of implications across the Premier League as a whole. I'm not saying Emery will do that, but I kind of feel like the same kind of vibes that Emery can do those kind of things for Aston Villa specifically, that he can kind of bring his modern day approach to Aston Villa and kind of bring us into a new era. Is that a bit of an overreaction? It's an interesting comparison because Emery was obviously the manager who came in at Arsenal after Wenger as well, which is maybe an interesting sort of subplot, but yeah, Villa want Emery to be the guy that leads them back into the glory days and, and where they want Villa to be. When they first took over the club, there was they obviously communicated those grand ambitions that they have of Villa being at the top table of European football once again. And it was hard to sort of believe at that point because of where we'd just come from. And even over the last three years, Villa were slowly climbing the league and it was never going to be a quick process, but they had a five-year plan and there was always going to be sort of bumps in the road. But at the same time, in a five-year plan, if you're going to go from championship to European football, it's also got to be quite smooth. Yeah. Villa have done it in a really weird way of... Um, they've done the hard bit in terms of getting promoted and then consolidating, you know, really difficult. That's very difficult to do. And now um, we've taken a huge jump from being sort of mid-table, but always in the bottom half, really, under mm. Gerard and Smith. We were never really competing in the top half until yeah. maybe a couple of months during COVID. Um, I mean, it's funny that you say it's almost a, a strange rise because it, it is and it isn't. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm purely going here from kind of like points tallies that you get promoted, you stay in the league, you finish 11th under Smith, which under any other year, 55 points, yeah, yeah. probably does get you into the top half and if not near the top seven <laughs> in some seasons. It's then the Gerard season where we finish... 14th, 14th was it on yeah. something like 45 46 points that that's the one that's a step back and then you go from that season to obviously Emery getting us into to seventh place so it is a kind of incremental rise it it's was. just that one season back where we kind of thought okay this five-year plan three-year plan whatever you want to describe it as that's the bump in the road the Gerard year was like are we are we actually progressing here as a club are we going forward so again we've kind of spoken at length about the job that Uno Emery has done but to go from that to seventh place in European football in six months is an unbelievable task even it's we can talk about it on, on yeah. podcast week after week and it, it, I we still do. can't wrap my head around how big of a deal that is yeah it is remarkable because as you mentioned the way that the club go, it was going sorry and we've always said for a long time everything seems to be in place in terms of um, the ambition the funding behind it and the people actually in the club as well they've done a really good job to get us to this point because it's not just Emery who has all of a sudden got 11 players on a pitch working well Villa have this has been a long I say long five years in the, in the in the way that they've restructured certain aspects of the club in terms mm. of recruitment and and you know, put the foundations scouting. in place exactly yeah. that, that's the word I'm looking for foundations and now Emery is <clears throat> the elite manager that Villa have been crying out for um, no disrespect to managers that have come before but I think they'd accept as well that with Emery's CV and what he's well he's proven over the last six months as of, of what he's capable of doing I don't think anyone expected it to be this quick though I think that's the key thing so Villa of although it's a five-year plan and they've got there into Europe six months ago I don't think when Emery was appointed they'd be expecting to yeah, have fulfilled yeah, that yeah. five-year plan it was a, we're sort of aiming for you know aiming for European football and if we don't get it we'll be somewhere behind but that's okay because we can build under a manager like Emery when actually he's just done the job I, <laughs> and, I'd, have thought, I'd have thought Emery might needed two full seasons to get us into Europe and that's not undermining his his ability as a as a football manager, but just that this kind of process process takes time. If he needs to sign seven or eight players and let go of seven or eight, you're not going to do that in a window or two. You probably need three or four windows. So I just assumed that 
yes, he's a great manager and there's a the makings of a decent squad there, but he probably needs a, a couple of full seasons to, to really achieve anything. So to do what he's done already and get us into seventh, again, we've got talking about what happens next season and will we drop off in the league and will we compete in the FA Cup and all that kind of thing is at this stage largely irrelevant because let's just focus on the job he's done so far and, and that is a special task, I think. Yeah, and you mentioned the, the squad they inherited. Those players have proven to be well, players that can play in European football and can compete across a, you know 25 games and only have Man City and Arsenal that return more points than them and they were criticised under Gerrard and under Smith as well of being you know or what or not being good enough to take or to be the players that can you know fulfil Villa's um, ambitions and they've proven that they can be so mm. while we're going to talk about Emery a lot and say how the club's sort of building around him and allowing him to do his own thing as such those players deserve an awful lot of credit because yeah. Yeah, those are the one apart from Alex Moreno and I mean John Duran's had twelve appearances off the bench, but apart from those two players, it's exactly the same team mm. that that were criticised. And again, you must look at the recruitment and say, Well, there's actually some things that the club definitely got right there. Because yeah, yeah. again you there's some players there and that, previous managers that were well. criticised yeah, they were criticised. Um and then you look at other you know, within other circles at the club and think, Oh well, whose fault was it basically but then after all of this progression then you say oh well, well done to Mr Emery but there's again a lot of foundations there that have had to have been in place for Emery to work with a group of players who yeah. are coachable to this level that there's a lot of teams that Emery could have taken over and wouldn't have had, wouldn't have had this effect you know you might have had a few performances and, or, or a bit of um, sort of buy-in but this Villa team that all of them are bought into what he wants to do and they're all learning from it as well which is good to see and yeah again that, that comes down to talent ID and things like that mm. for me um, you know working under Dean Smith working under Gerard and now they're working under an elite manager and they're all they must be buzzing about it so yeah it's only good for their careers mm. I, I made the comparison at the very start to, to Wenger and I don't know why I picked him to be honest it might be that he was the previous Arsenal manager and Emery took over from him but F- Ferguson as well is is a name that you could compare him to not in terms of what he can do as a manager but I'm talking about long term it's a very difficult thing to obviously predict the future and there's a lot of kind of when a manager comes in you think well he might get three seasons if he's lucky you know every manager or every CEO or owner will appoint a manager wanting them to be there for the long term future of course no one's I mean unless you lead appoint a big Sam for four games but you know what I mean if you bring a new manager in you want him to be there for three four years and bring success and win trophies and whatnot more often than not, that doesn't work out. Managers get 12 months if they're lucky and they're out the door. So I think to sit here and say that the owners want, NSWE want Uno Emery to be here for the next 10 years. Yes, of course they do. But I genuinely think that's a possibility with, with Emery that he looks like he seems to be the kind of manager that or head coach that wants to kind of f- fulfil a project from beginning to end and take, take ownership of a club and, and be that figurehead. And I think we've spoken before about how Villa need that uh, a club the size of Villa needs somebody to be the man to to kind of represent them and yes. you said in the live show that we did here whenever this video came out for us now it was last week but it could have been weeks ago by the time people are seeing this you were saying like how he's the most important person at the club and he you know you kind of build around him and, and what he says goes kind of thing and again lots of other clubs will, will think the same of their manager but for some reason it I don't know. I don't even know how I, how I explain how I feel here, but it feels like Villa fit that kind of manager. The way you kind of talk about how oh, Brighton and Brentford have got like an approach where the manager could be interchangeable, but they'll always play the same way and they'll always recruit the same kind of um, player. I don't really see that with Villa. I see them as having somebody that goes, oh, I'm the manager of Villa here and I'm going to do everything and I'm going to be in control. And I think Emery suits that kind of approach. Yeah, I think there's certain clubs that need that. I've always said like Liverpool with all of their managers that they've had in the past, they needed someone like Jurgen Klopp just to take it take it by the throat and <laughs> and lead them up the Premier League table and um, again we don't want to make it out as if Unai Emery is the only good thing <laughs> that's happened to Aston Villa over the last few years it's not that at all it's just that I think everything was in place because there's a lot of good things about Villa at the moment they just needed that elite, that elite manager <clears throat> to ultimately get three points on the weekend <laughs> Yeah, yeah. and that's what's now driving us forward because again no disrespect to the managers but now we do have an elite guy in, in the hot seat and yeah you're right that's going to take us forward obviously we know that Villa are a big club and want to be a big club and act as a big club and that means winning trophies regularly but let's be realistic about it we're not going to be competing for the Premier League in the next I don't know however many years I, I wanted to say a couple of years but it could be 20 years before Villa compete for a league title but they want to be winning trophies and they want to finish as high as possible now if you're 
Unai Emery, who goes to a Chelsea or an Arsenal, anyone that's expected to be up in the top four, there's immediate pressure that they have to deliver. And if they don't, they can spend a fortune, get rid of the manager and start the whole cycle again. Whereas Villa, obviously we're backed by billions of pounds, but you've got to get things right because you're on that kind of knife edge all the time that you're not this elite club. It's difficult, so I don't want to undersell Villa here, but you're not a Chelsea or an Arsenal that are expected to be in the top four every single season. Villa are we don't want to be there. But yeah, we don't have that yet. We want to be there. If it doesn't work for Villa under Emery here now, or any manager before, you're on that knife edge that you think, well, oh, maybe the owners lose interest at some point and think this club isn't, isn't they, they can't match my ambitions of being a top six club. They finished 14th under Gerrard. They've done this, they've done that. Maybe it's time to pull the plug and go. So you need somebody as, as a figurehead of Emery to get it right and you need to nail everything that you do and, and recruitment needs to be spot on and you need to be winning games, obviously. And then, but that's the, the next point, really, isn't it? Is they're trying to, they know they've got the man now and they've got it right. Exactly, yeah, they yeah. Made, they made the decision it's worked. Now it's about what can you do to firstly keep Emery, support him and make sure, as you say, that it's not sort of a flash in the pan yeah, and that next yeah. season there's either a... Um, Emery suggested that he needs a different type of player or whatever it may be and that's not going to happen because they will back him and they are putting things in place to make sure that I've said it before it's like um, it's like a wall around him almost to say well if I don't know X club let's say Barcelona come in through an Emery next season because he's started really well with Villa and we're third after 15 games or something and they want a new manager Emery would then say I mean Barcelona is quite an extreme <laughs> example but it, X club comes in for it Emery has the power at Villa to make that's or it, yeah. to be influential in decisions. They want to back him with players. And that's trusting Emery with the decisions. You know, one fault. But then the next, you can't replicate the power that you've got here yeah. elsewhere. So what, what more do you want apart from, you know, I don't know, personal reasons or whatever? Yeah, I think that, that comparison with, with Klopp even is a good example of Ferguson and Wenger. It's like, you're the man, you're in charge, everything goes through you, you make the big decisions because you're the guy ultimately that is leading this club forward over a multitude of years. Like I said, the kind of comparisons to a Chelsea or a Spurs or somebody that wants to be in the top four every year and, and pushing for titles and stuff, it's so quick that if they don't succeed, they're out the door and they're gone. And I don't know whether Uno Emery is the kind of personality that suits a club like that. If you look at Sevilla... I don't think that's something that he's only had a bad experience from that. Yeah, it's the kind of the, the, the middling club that is on the periphery of that greatness where he needs to go in and, and take control and go back a year. The owners wouldn't be going, right, we need to win the Europa League next year because we're not even in it yet. We need someone to get us there and then have the right man to go, right, I'm the guy to bring this club forward into the, in a modern era, into a new way of playing. I'm going to win trophies here. And the owners, like I said, every owner will want their manager and their appointment to be the long-term one. I could realistically see Emery being here for five or ten years. And I don't think that happens in modern football anymore. And of course, he could come back to this video in two years' time when he's been sacked and like an absolute mug, but it, everything feels like it could head that way. Yeah, I think he spent three years in Sevilla and then three years, or so not three years, uh, was it two years in Villarreal? Stretching towards three, I think, before we poached him. So that's the sort of three to five years I think was probably the range and that's fine because three years is a long time in football like three years ago Villa were what was three years ago that was was that Covid? Survival yeah Covid was the survival season a lot changes and a lot will change over that time with Evan, with Emery in the hot seat or not so another point that you raised there but when Sawiris and, and the club was approaching Emery it would have been a conversation of here's the power we want to give you and that's exactly what Emery would need to be taken out of a club that like Villarreal give him yeah. give him everything and like Sevilla gave him so much with um, you know Monchi as his sporting director so again it's, it's having that relationship with the club that he knows that what he wants he will most likely not get but they'll cl the, the club will back him for, for it and that's why PSG Arsenal deteriorated a little bit because he's obviously not going to have the power at PSG because well, I mean, we know they could kind of sign anyone and it's sort of above the manager hmm. who, who comes in. And Arsenal was very similar. And I think they actually learned from that experience after that. Then they bring in Arteta and they obviously back him and not Emery. And why is that? So I think they've probably learned less than their Arsenal. And yeah, Villa have got someone who is, again, an elite manager. Someone who can not only make a difference on a match day, but 
in terms of recruitment, in terms of footballing decisions. He knows, I've said it before, I think he'd go upstairs in most clubs right now and yeah. do a job. Yeah. Um, he's more than a football manager. He lives and breathes it every, you know, every hour of the day. So, yeah, we are we are genuinely lucky to have him. And it's we needed someone like Emery. I ju- I'm just so surprised about how quickly the, um, the progress has been made. And that's what I would say is we, we don't want to kind of then brand our expectations to next year of we need to go I know you have um, <laughs> we then need to go and better our league position or whatever I think it, it's going to be a gradual thing and if in three years time we're looking at Aston Villa competing in the Europa League and getting near the Champions League then pff, what a position that is you can't yeah. have so much better than that because yeah. better than that is winning you know competing for the Premier League and competing in the Champions League you, the one beneath that is where a Villa need to be in the next few years because no one can say that we're going to be um, you know anything better than that because that's that's like it's the serious stuff with like Man City and yeah. You you look at what West Ham have done most recently of Europa League semi final last season. It's, it's, it's doing what exactly it's Leicester, Wolves, West Ham, all those teams have done what we've just done in terms of breaking that top seven sort of gap or whatever. And I know Newcastle have done it, but in a very different way. But those teams have always got it and then dropped out mm. and had relegation fights. Wolves, Leicester, and West Ham as well. Villa want to get there and stay there. And, and I think with Emery, that is key because yeah. he knows how to... And it's possible. We can win the thing and then try and win the Europa League. And we're trying to stick there is what I'm trying to get at. And with Emery, I think we can definitely do it because he knows how to manage mm. all of that in terms of uh, Thursday to Sunday, manage both games, mm. play different ways for the both games. It's so kind of stuff as mm. well. Just on the West Ham example very quickly, and this is a bit of a tangent... I don't think next and then, this is a, a topic for later down in the season, I don't think Villa will drop off in the league in the same way that West Ham have done this season because of their Europa um, journey, for want of a better word. I, as I've said before on the podcast, I actually think Villa will be good in the league and good in the Conference League as well. But if Villa were to finish 14th next season but win the Conference League, it, would that be a, is that a successful season? Is that a good achievement? I think it needs context because you'd, a 14th place finish for Aston Villa next year would mean that we've had problems. and that. But you've won the European I, trophy and you're in the Europa League. But that would mask over the problems that, for example, West Ham have got problems at the moment in terms of, you know, is David Moyes going to stay? Are they Are going to lose the captain? Yeah. Clearly they need a few better players and to ship some out because they finished 14th in the league and won this amount of games over a 38-match season. So... I think if Villa were to finish 14th for next year but win a FA Cup or win a Conference League then okay great <laughs> but at the same time there's clearly issues there yeah. because I don't think that drop off will happen not, anyway I mean, no but I, it, I think it's a valid question you know, at what to what ex, like expenses are Premier League for I think if you can get a top 10 finish because then you're looking at it being what six points maybe between yeah, yeah. there and European football potentially um, so a, a top 10 finish and Winning the Europa League, I think, would be sorry. Conference League would be a successful season because then you're in the Europa League next year. It's European football again. Um, but I think anything less than that, I don't think Emery would be satisfied with. No. You, and, you know, he, and, he, and that's what you want. It's progression from after your football year manager. After you year. want to be better. Yeah. And the word that I think that I'm going with the, with the title for this 21 minutes into recording, and if obviously what everyone will know watching this, what the title was already, it's like an Aston Villa obsession for Emery. And we've seen various things over his six months here, like the, the most recent one that springs to mind about. Or two, actually. One about like building accommodation at Bodymore to sort of stay there for later nights or get there for early mornings or whatever and be more committed to the job. Like this obsession to be better and, and do more. And the most recent one, as I've recorded this at least, was there was an interview with John McGinn in the Telegraph, was it? The Telegraph, yeah. And he's saying that he'd pop back into Bodymore for whatever reason to pick up some stuff or whatever and and Uno Emery was in there re-watching the Brighton game yeah I know it's oh, like, I mean, it's no, for, no surprise there it's like why first of all why does that matter at this point now the season's over it's finished we won the game we move on like uh, largely irrelevant really it's now what 10 days or so as we record this after we think it's irrelevant yeah, yeah. well yeah we do but that's what I mean but the, the football manager at Aston Villa is going now I need to re-watch that and he's probably re- already rewatched it since then. He probably watched it the night of the game. Like, and it's that obsession and that drive to do more that I said in the live show here last week that 
my favorite well, one of my favorite things about Emery is that he doesn't talk down the club. He doesn't kind of go, well, yeah, we should be doing this, we should be doing that. Chelsea should wipe the floor with us when they come to Villa Park. Like he goes, now nah, I want to get to Europe. I want to win trophies. We want to do this. We want the connection with the fans. Blah blah blah. Like he wants all the good things that come with being a successful football team. And it's a, it's obsession. That is the word. But I think he he has that. Of course, he has a huge drive to do it. But it's also because he believes in. Villa and he believes in the project as well it's a marriage made in heaven so you know what he did with Sevilla for example um, he can he knows he, he knows he can replicate that with Villa and he also knows that it will be an even bigger achievement considering where Villa came from considering the struggles that we might have had previously and doing it in the Premier League is also a team. very different thing as and well. doing it in the Premier yeah. League yeah and, and there's more um, there's more reward I think for doing it with the Premier League team it's more um, it's more, more eyes it's more, more eyes it's more, well. it's more money it's it's changing the reputation that he had as well in England that nowhere else had of Emery it was only here that he had that because I don't know for different reasons and obviously didn't go particularly well at Arsenal but again why is that is it because Arsenal didn't back him is that because Arsenal didn't really listen to what he wanted um, I don't know that potentially so at Villa is getting everything that he needs to complete the job so if you're giving everything that Emery needs and he believes in your project he's not going to slack any day like can you imagine that he's already driven <laughs> if you're giving him everything he needs and he knows he's going to do a good job of it he's going to make sure that you if you love what you do you better. love doing it as well like the pictures of him like sat on the coach after a game like, with his laptop out already like already looking at stuff it's like that probably is the norm for every other manager in the Premier League but because we're not used to that with an Aston Villa manager it's just a it's a breath of fresh air and yeah, obsession is the, is the word for me to describe Emery and Aston Villa. He is obsessed with driving Aston Villa forward. And we're and obsessed with him. We're obsessed with him as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, honestly, there's not enough that you can say about him. I don't know how long this podcast is particularly, and we've kind of gone down different routes, but you could do 50 different podcasts about little things. That, yeah, yeah, that you, and we probably you know would know for the just, <laughs> Yeah, possibly so. But if you're jogging in the park and you just wanted to listen to an Emery for half an hour, then hopefully we've 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 filled that. Yeah, like we said, we're obsessed with Emery, and I know that everyone watching this will be as well. Um, get involved in the conversation in the YouTube comments down below. We're going to try and get better at replying to comments and being more reactive to them. I think we might introduce a show at some point where we kind of react to YouTube comments and spark conversation based off what fans are saying as well. So it's not a waste of time if you leave a comment. If I don't reply to them, I do read every single one at least. So I was um, doing a get involved. I was just saying I was doing a Q and A on obviously on Birmingham Live and um, I was about to wrap up and then I had a huge question it wasn't much of a question it was more of like a it was like an article in itself from one of the readers <laughs> I forget the name now and it was just really well uh, worded I wish I had it on me but yeah it's just that sort of feeling of everyone's just like blown away by what what's just happened over the last six months and how sort of indebted we feel <laughs> to you and I Emery and it's it's only just getting started as well and that's the sort of if I was an opposition um, club, how scary it is really that Villa have got everything in place and they've got this guy now that's really pushing it. And um, yeah, really exciting to be a Villa fan. So yeah, many years ahead of you and I, hopefully. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you, John, for your time as always. And we'll see you very soon. Yeah.